What's up? Hello, what? everybody. <laughs> he has to film. Sorry, okay. this is very surreal. Usually I'm documenting kind of things like this. This is the first time I've been recognized by well, one of them. Oh, that's yeah. us on screen. Suck in a little bit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so for those of you who haven't watched your HBO series, John, How To with John Wilson, it's super unique and relatable. You guys should watch it. It's amazing. Um, but very hard to put into words. So for those that haven't seen it, can you kind of describe what it's all about? Um, I was trying to describe it to this guy I met at, a, at a, the bar here last night, and it didn't go very well. Should we show the trailer? Do <laughs> you want to show the trailer first? <laughs> then? I, well, I, I said, you know, I asked him if he'd ever seen that show, Planet Earth, and he said no, so that was a bad start. <laughs> um, but then I said, it's kind of like Planet Earth, but for New York City, you know, kind of like a, 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 a kind of a, a, a study of, you know, all the little things that you may not notice, um, you know, in, in the kind of natural, in the urban environment, you know. Awesome. But yeah, the trailer also, um, you know, it does a lot. It does a lot of the work too for people that are still confused. <laughs> okay. Well, let's play that trailer and then we'll uh, talk more. HBO is having a hard time uh, explaining what my show is, uh, so I, I just figured that I'd just try to do it myself. Usually the host of a TV show is uh, right in front of the camera, and you can see exactly where the uh, voice is coming from, which I guess people like. But in my show, you never really see the host, and that's because I'm actually behind the camera the whole time, uh, filming everything you see. So. Instead of having to uh, stare at me for the whole program, you get to see all the cool stuff that I, I like to film instead, <laughs> which I think makes it a lot more exciting to watch. I spent a lot of time uh, walking around New York, trying to find the answers to some of life's biggest questions. Sometimes I uh, talk to people that I, I meet out in public and ask them for their advice. Other times I'll just open up a door and see what's on the other side. <clears throat> and every now and then I leave town for a couple of days and explore what uh, other cities have to offer. But at the end of the day, I always uh, come right back. It's kind of like that show Planet Earth, uh, but if it was only in New York and uh, David Attenborough was forced to film everything himself. So stick with me. And I'll show you how to solve problems uh, that you didn't even know you had. Because even if it looks like you've got it all figured out, there's always a million ways to get it wrong. Yeah, sorry. Some, some of that imagery might be a little intense for nine in the morning. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> really funny. So, uh, let's start at the beginning. How did you come into filmmaking? Um, yeah, it just, it kind of started, um, I, I feel like the way a lot of people did is, you know, as when I was a kid, my dad had this Hi8 movie camera, and uh, he got it for a birthday present, and I took it from him immediately and started filming uh, every single day. I would just make a movie every single day throughout my whole childhood, and um, I never really stopped. Uh, I went through many phases. I started making skit comedy stuff, but then I totally stopped doing that because, I, I don't know, I, I didn't really like it that much. But then I got into documentary you know, stuff, and that's kind of where I landed. I just love this format so much um, because I can kind of do whatever I want. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> what was the inspiration behind How To with John Wilson as a show? Um, I think in like 2010, I made this movie called How to Clean a Cast Iron Pan. Um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and, you know, it, which is in, in like a notoriously, uh, you know, personal thing, depending on, you know, who's, you know, how you like to season your pan or whatever. Um, you know, it was like a four minute video, uh, but it was mostly. Like, I was documenting my roommate at the time who never cleans the pan, <laughs> and um, it was kind of a hit piece on my roommate just between us, um, just to make him feel shame for not cleaning. 
But then, um, you know, because he never cleans the pan in the end of the movie. Um, but then, yeah, I don't know. I kind of fell in love with this format. Um, you know, I narrated the thing. Uh, that was the first time I had really narrated anything. And I, like, hated the sound of my voice my whole life. And I always tried to disguise it and dress it up and stuff um, by, like, changing the pitch or something, like, if, if I was ever, like, making something um, fictional. Um, but with this project, I just wanted to really just look at all the stuff I was super insecure about head on and just, like, put it in front and center, um, which I think, like, informed a lot of the way that the show is, is kind of, like, structured. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and, and I just started making more how I just kept making how to's every year. It would take me like a year to make a 10 minute movie. And then I did it enough times that it um, attracted people with money. And then they um, gave me money to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of money, you just got picked up for season three for HBO. Congratulations. Yeah, thank That's you. awesome. <laughs> What does that feel like? You know, how's it been to be on HBO? Um, it's been really cool, but really strange. <laughs> I don't know. It's like before the pandemic, I, there was there no, you know, nobody really like knew anything about me. I mean, I feel like a lot of people, most people, still don't. Um, <laughs> but <clears throat> but yeah, now it's like when the pandemic, like like once started people people started coming out of their houses, like people started recognizing me and stuff, and it was very strange, just, just in New York, mostly. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's really weird. Like, it's like, my physical body hasn't changed, but, like, people's perception of it has, I guess. I don't know, I guess that's fame. I don't know, this is, like, a, something that, like, I, I'm still processing, clearly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, I don't know, it's, 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 it's incredible. I, it's, it's, like... It's something I truly believe in, and I'm just so glad it has like a platform like that people can access it. You know, I mean, I still don't have an H HBO. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> they like very early on in the process, I asked them for a HBO you know account, and they said they just said no. <laughs> so I'm still like I'm still using my ex girlfriend's. Uh, <laughs> Which I, is weird, because she probably can see, it's like I see what she's watching too, you know. It's, <laughs> it's a good way to keep track, I guess. Yeah. I know, I, I feel, it's just like, oh yeah, you're, you're farther into the righteous gemstones than I am. <laughs> it's amazing. And you went from being a one-man band to HBO with the production crew, and did that change anything, or? Yeah, I mean, yeah, so yeah, I was very much a one-man band. I would just shoot, write, and narrate everything myself. Um, and you know, I didn't use any diegetic sound, like just because I didn't have a sound guy. So I would just have to narrate everything because I, I couldn't get good sound. But now I have a whole team, and I have like, whereas like I used to just go out on the streets every single day and just film obsessively and just get as, harvest as much material as I could. But now I have like four teams of shooters that go out every single day and I, I, I kind of train them to think like me in this twisted way, and, which, you know, is a, a weird kind of punishment, I think, too. <laughs> and um, they have to, yeah, they basically, I give them like a style bible, you know, with like, uh, with animated GIFs um, that say like, this is the kind of subject matter, this is the kind of framing I want, and they just pick it up really, they just like all picked it up immediately, but also like bring their own stuff to the table. So yeah, scaling up, it was like kind of weird at first because I didn't know how to like clone myself, but I, I realized I didn't have to worry about that as much because everyone was bringing their own kind of uh, artistic stuff to the table and they were like, I don't know, like noticing things that I would never would have noticed. And that, like, I was really stubborn at first, because I was like, no, it's got to be, you know, like, my way. This is, like, it's got to look this way. But then everyone involved just kind of opened me up and made me realize that, like, like ha ha be being so kind of uh, um, single-minded about it is a bad idea. And, you know, it, it's like you got to 
it's like to, I've just been shaving my ego down a lot, you know, since the beginning, and it's like I think to really good effect. Well, and you have to let go a little bit too. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Yeah, you you, you have to let go a lot, you know, because there's just there's so many like parts of the operation you can't see, but like you just gotta have trust in the people around you, you know. A lot of them were like really good friends I've known for a while, but some of them are new people. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been cool. And it's been nice to be able to pay people, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's like, that was, a, that was the main thing that stopped me from like, like hiring or like bringing anyone else on before it was just because I didn't want to like, you know, like not pay someone to do something. Right. Anyway. <laughs> this is good. Wait, what does the visual style Bible look like? Like, I, I would love to have like a little glimpse into how you can ex how you explain things to them. Um, it, it's like okay, so you know, if there's a, a I, I usually it's, I, I like to stay wide on, on each shot. Just I want I want there to be as much information as possible within the shot, and then um, also like. If something is funny that you're filming, um, like film that for a little while, but then pan to something else in the environment like that is totally unrelated. Um, and then, you know, so if you're filming a pigeon, then pan to a sign that says, you know, uh, free lunch or something. Um, <laughs> and then it may not make sense in the moment when you're filming it, but then in the edit, you can make some funny joke that, that kind of acts, I don't know, that's like the magic of the show a lot of the time is that these jokes kind of write themselves in the edit and there are these, the audience I think is like how could you possibly have predicted that it would go from here to there, you know, right. but like so much of it is reverse engineered. Very cool. Um, and you said you hired some of your friends, I mean how do you pick your team, do you get to pick the other, the newbies too? Uh, yeah, I mean most of the people are just like people whose eye I trust. I mean, I, I feel like you could teach anybody to use a camera, but knowing what to shoot is like a, a different skill set entirely and like knowing what's interesting. So, I mean, a couple of people I just found on Instagram that I, I knew were like really like, uh, like that were kind of fearless and would just shoot anything. Right, you just know. take it on. Awesome. Um, and I think it was Jimmy Kimmel who said something like, I hate to ask you how the show is made because you might ruin it, but um, <laughs> do you want to dive in a little <laughs> bit more? Um, so you usually start with an unlikely topic and it veers into a totally different direction, like you said. Um, so should we, maybe we can share a clip or two and then we can dive into Oh, yeah, that. sure. Okay, yeah, we can, yeah, also, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, hopefully it's not too early for this one either. Um, <laughs> it's fine. Th this is, good. yeah, I mean, you know, we, uh, I, I, like to, I like to, in, in the back of my mind, are the, the kind of rules of improv all the time. Um, and, you know, one of the, the famously, one of them is, you know, just keep saying yes and, and like never cut, cut off the conversation. Um, just, just kind of keep agreeing and see where it goes from there. So, I take that into the work sometimes in, in this clip that we have here, or that's, that's gonna come up in a second, but like, it, it's basically an, an example of like, like, this is a one note gag that I kind of wrote that um, turned into something, turned into a travel shoot, like something completely different because I just uh, asked him, continued asking him questions and, and decided to go along on the ride with him. Love it, all right, let's watch it. So, uh, yeah. location is everything when you're making small talk. You could pose the same question in two uh, different environments and receive wildly different answers. You could ask a question to a philosopher. Do you think mankind is going to make a comeback? I hope so. Um, <laughs> if we can survive the perils of climate change, inequality, and uh, uh, the fantastic weapons of destruction we've created for ourselves. But that same question uh, might get a much different answer at WrestleMania. Do you think mankind is going to make a comeback? No, not tonight. He fell off too many hell in the cells. Oh, really? Yeah. What about mankind in general? Oh, mankind, like, 
the whole world? I mean, it's not bad. It could be better, but I'm happy with my life, so. What do you, uh, what do, you do? Uh, I catch child predators. If you want to look me up, it's Mr. 17540 on Facebook. That's what I do in my spare time. You catch child predators? Yes, I do. How? I, I set up the stings online, and I Facebook Live them, and I go and get them. Really? Yes, sir. At the end of our conversation, the gentleman invited me to his headquarters in Pennsylvania, and I figured I could learn something by heading out there to see him in action. So, what's going on today? Well, we're gonna go catch us a predator today. Yeah? Do you have something set up? Oh, uh, yeah, a guy's 28 years old, he knows that I'm 15, and I told him to bring condoms, and he's gonna try to meet me for sex. But anyway, yeah, and then, yeah, we, we'll, we'll leave it there. What? I now need to know what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Which season is that so I can go back uh, and watch it? That was the very first episode. Um, yeah, it was about small talk. <laughs> and I kind of like, you know, I end up talking with him in his kitchen for a while as he's setting up this thing, um, you know, and he he tells me how he makes small talk with the predators um, to keep them on the, the, the hook for long enough. So yeah, I, I like to look for uh, <laughs> uh, advice in really strange places. <laughs> but, but, but we never meet up with the predators, to, to, to spoil. Uh, that never, there is no, so you don't have to worry about that if you plan on watching the rest of the episode. <laughs> Got it. Uh, the guy bails. And most of your footage is shot in New York, um, but obviously you go other places to find interesting characters. But what is it about New York and why New York? Was that just where you lived and fell in love with, or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I grew up in Long Island for the most part, but you know, my family's from Queens and we're always in and out, and I always just wanted to be back there as an adult. Um, <clears throat> I've been there for a long time as an adult, and it's just like the best, collage, city for collage work. I mean, there's just so much material everywhere you go. It's like, you don't even have to do anything. It's already there. <laughs> like, you just doc, it, like that, that was what was so great is like, I was, I was so poor when I first like wanted to like start making these like movies and, and this was just, there's like a built in, like but filming in New York, there's like a built in production value, even if it costs nothing. Right. Like you just, it just looks expensive because it's there, even if it costs you, yeah, like nothing to make. So that, that, that's kind of like, was a big thing to begin with. But yeah, I mean, it's just like every block, there's just some image you've never seen before and it just resets itself every single day. And that's, you know, why I, I feel like I'll, I'll never, leave while, you know, as long as I'm making this show. But um, I don't know, other cities offer a lot too. Yep. But I just don't know them as well, and I, you know, I, get, I get scared in new places. <laughs> <laughs> and you do an amazing job of exploring New York and finding places that people usually don't go to in some, in some cases. Um, has there been one or two things that have uh, incredibly surprised you along the way? Oh, in New York? Yeah. Oh, gee. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised constantly. It's, it's like, um, I'm trying to think. You're putting me on the spot with this. Sorry. I don't know. There was a cool bingo hall I found recently. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Like, so much of it is, it's, it's hard to pick apart. No. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I find crazy characters every day that are like, just like want to talk. Yep. And that's the best. That's awesome. And so talk about how you come up with themes for episodes. Is it you have an idea and then you go look for it or is it you find the footage and then you reverse it, like, you know, like it's reverse engineered? Right. Um, <clears throat> I usually just start with the titles themselves and see where they go from there. So like I knew I wanted to make a movie about scaffolding. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, and then I, I, so I started with the title, how to, how to put up scaffolding, and I just kind of wanted to, I just took, tried to take it to its logical conclusion and just see where that went. So I studied, you know, like, just scaffolding within the city, but then scaffolding in cinema, and then, like, 
all the erotic uh, potential that scaffolding has. Um, and Never thought of it that way. <laughs> I know. I mean, there is like there is a fetish for everything. Yeah. <laughs> There's probably some yeah some yeah. hospitality fetishists here. Yeah. <laughs> we can spark um, some ideas for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I usually, I, I like to start with a very bold title. That's usually what excites me the most. And then I, 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 I try to make the definitive movie about that, but then I, I, I detour uh, inevitably every single time, which is like the fun of it, I think. Yeah. And once you start looking for something, can you ever kind of turn it off or is it always, you know, once you have one of these ideas? Yeah, I, I think once the new obsession begins, I turn it off. Like, I, I don't, like, I don't shoot scaffolding anymore. I don't, like, I can't, like, You're done with it. it's, it's nauseating to me. And, like, even when I turn it off now, like, people still send me photos of scaffolding, like, every week. And, you know, which is, like, fine. It's nice, but <laughs> I, I just, like, uh, it, it's a weird thing with, like, the shooters, too, because, like, my shooters will get a scavenger hunt list at the beginning of each season. Like, oh, that's fun. you know, one of them is like, you know, like houses, like, you know, buildings that look like faces, you know, that would be one of them. And we shot the whole second season and we had like a nice little montage of them, but they can't turn it off. They are still sending me photos and stuff too. Um, so it, it, it is a weird thing because like you train yourself to see something like in only that thing for like a year. Right. And then you just have to, the only way to dislodge it is to just put a new obsession in front of it, I think. Got it. And then is that how you find groups and themes by putting, you know, these different obsessions, do they ever kind of come together and cross over or is it just very siloed? It, I mean, when I'm interviewing somebody, I will usually talk about six episodes worth of subjects. Right. Um, and then, whatever kind of the spark, the, the, wherever the spark is with them, I'll use it for that. But um, yeah, there is a lot of crossover and the themes do, do come dangerously close to one another, but um, I try to keep them pretty separate within the episodes. Like if one episode is about safety, or one is about memory, you know, they can, any interview can go into any episode basically, but I, I try to keep the subjects like pretty defined, I guess. Got it. And the show, I mean, as everyone's seen, is like super funny, very raw, very authentic, which isn't easy. And what I love is that you have a gift of just making people feel comfortable and talk to, and they'll talk to you about anything, obviously, um, as you saw. So what is, what is it do you think that you do to make people feel that way? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really surprised at that. Uh, yeah, that's how it comes across. <laughs> uh, I, but yeah, I, I, I do, I don't know. I just like asking questions. I mean, that's just like the safest thing to do. I, you know, I always felt like my stories were really boring. And um, I just feel like, yeah. and then I realized it's just like, you can learn you can always learn more from just asking questions and talking about yourself, you know? And, and that's like the experiment of the show a lot of the time. Right. Just like, don't, don't try to force whatever my thing is onto it, you know? Like, because, you know, when I meet somebody, there might be some, like, there might be some like kind of initial kind of like soft judgment, like, oh, what's going on with this? This seems like a weird, like a weird, like, it, environment, it seems like a weird convention, what's going on here? But then, like, the process of the show is, like, trying, me almost, like, working through my own prejudices in a way, and, like, no, there's something here, and there's part of me here, there's part of all of us here, and, like, what is that thing, you know? Yeah. Like, instead of just, like, like, oh, this is weird, forget about it, you know? I love that idea of yes and. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, it's not something that, like, always comes easy, like sometimes I do just want to quit and go home, you right. know, or just like stop like making the thing, but I, I just like, I just have to force myself to just, to, to just keep at it because I know there's something, I know there's something there and it kills me when it, 
when I, I, I feel like I've, I've gone home prematurely and, and like didn't like go all the way with it. Yeah, I feel that way too. Like you, you have that one extra question that you should have asked or. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, gotcha. Um, so what have been some of your favorite episodes? I know it's hard to pick um, a favorite one. My favorite episode is called How to Appreciate Wine. Ooh. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't have that much to do with wine. <laughs> Um, but uh, it kind of has to do with cults in a way, but also like um, it has to do with mostly about energy drinks. Oh. <laughs> um, and yeah, that, that's just like my favorite demonstration of like the what the potential of the show has, right. where like I, you know I just end up walking in the front door of this, the, 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 the CEO of this energy drink company's at mansion, and uh, he just invites me in, you know, and it's like, a, a, it's just one of those like kind of crazy gambles that paid off in a, in, in, in a weird way. Um, but yeah, I really like that one. I forget if there's, didn't I have some other clip? Yeah, you have a clip. Well, well you have the trailer uh, season two. I don't know, do we have another clip, right? Yeah, there was something else. I forget what it was. Oh, oh, what this one? Oh, this one is really cool too. <laughs> Very relative to um, this. Group. This one, uh, yeah, maybe you guys would. This would be relevant to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is like uh, an episode. You know, my cat was scratching all my furniture, and I was getting really upset and looking for solutions and. Um, I inevitably settled on plastic furniture covers, and this is, and which is what Lance is at the title here, but then there's like a, a tiny uh, section I'll show you about um, taste and, uh, you know, like kind of what, what I feel like taste is. All right, should we play it? <laughs> Now, a lot of people think that plastic furniture covers are unsightly and will judge you for your choice. So before you do anything you might regret, uh, first you're going to need to be confident in your sense of taste. Everyone likes to think that they have good taste, but this is impossible. Because you can't have good taste without bad taste. What is beautiful to you might be revolting to someone else. And it's almost impossible for good and bad taste to peacefully coexist. This is what makes people who use plastic covers uh, such a rare breed. They buy very dignified furniture, worthy of a showroom or a museum. But in order to extend its life, have decided to cover it with one of the most inelegant materials known to humankind. But at the same time, any lifestyle depraved enough to require a permanent shield against liquids is uh, worthy of respect. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> um, <laughs> so then, yeah, that, that episode, um, it becomes more about yeah, I, I, go, I, I do the furniture cover thing, but then it becomes more about circumcision at a, at a point. <laughs> I don't know, you gotta watch it, but I, yeah, I, couldn't, show I, you that, so. I couldn't show you that part here. <laughs> Look at stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, that's the one, that's the one, that's the number one episode that like people DM me on Instagram and they say like, they say like, I watched this with my father-in-law and like, and he hates me now. <laughs> you must so, get, yeah, don't watch it with the in-laws. Yeah. <laughs> you must get some interesting DMs. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they're cool. They're um, the last two years, what has that been like um, with COVID and, um, you know, what New York went through? Um, did, did you find anything else when the streets became quieter and, you know, a lot of people left and now they're coming back, but what, did that change your perception at all or change how you viewed New York? Um, yeah, for sure. I, I, I think like, <clears throat> cause like I, I was finishing season one right when COVID started 
And the kind of finale, it, it's kind of like it's folded into the finale of season one, like the whole like reveal that COVID was happening. But um, I never stopped shooting the whole time, and I felt this like this kind of gravity, you know, like this 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 weight, like that, uh, this, and this responsibility. I think to to just capture as much as I possibly could in, in this very delicate moment in, in, in history where, like, there was this, there's so much confusion. I'm talking about, like, the week that COVID happened, pretty much. Like, there's this shot in, um, in the finale of the first season where I just film a grocery, uh, the grocery store line in my supermarket, and it's, like, you know, it takes a minute and a half to walk the whole length of it around, it snakes everywhere. But it's like, nobody in line is wearing a mask, they're all wearing gloves. And <clears throat> like, you don't realize it at the time, only in retrospect did I realize that like, that, you know, that big supermarket rush was probably one of the biggest super spreader events, like <laughs> of all, you yeah. know, and we didn't realize it. Yeah. And, only like through, I don't know, I mean, that's just, I, I guess, the power of documentary in general, but like, um, I don't know, I, I just, I feel like New York looks so much more interesting now, like, than, than I've ever seen it in my life. And, and, you know, you have all of these sidewalk sheds everywhere, you have all these people with, with all these homemade, like, devices that, like, shield them on the subway and stuff. Um, it's tragic, but I, I just, the city is, just feels so much richer to me. And uh, the trailer for season two shows a little bit of a different New York, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, and I made this trailer to, uh, yeah, and I said some stuff that I already said, but yeah. <laughs> well, let's show the trailer you very way. Hey, New York. There's a lot of stuff that happened since the last season of the show ended. You had to spend a whole lot of time inside and got really close with just a handful of people. What? You got really good at cutting your own hair <laughs> and discovered exciting new ways to entertain yourself. But you still found a way to show up for work every day and treated yourself to a vacation whenever it felt safe. And just when you thought that things were going back to normal, the nightmare just seemed to continue. A lot of people thought that we wouldn't be able to make another season of the show. But we did. And it still has all your favorite stuff uh, from the first one. New York looks more interesting right now than it ever has before. And even though you lost a lot of what you loved, it really made you appreciate what you still have. So don't be upset if you feel like you missed anything along the way, because you don't always realize you're in the middle of history This is John Wilson. Talk to you soon. I mean, I think the beauty of what you do is you see things with new eyes, and you guys cat capture things like the skier. I mean, like that just oh, yeah. sometimes. It, sometimes is it just good luck of being in the right place at the right time, or? Yeah, that, that's the thing that terrifies me so much. You know is like so much of it is just like, just down to the, the fraction of a second being in the right place or wrong place <laughs> at, at, the, at the wrong time. It depends on how you look at it. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, and I feel that way at the beginning of every season. You know, I feel that way right now. Like, I just started, I just started production like this week, or pre-production, and it's like I know a bunch of crazy stuff is about to happen. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> and, and I'm just by being out in the world, it will happen, but I don't know, it, it, it's, I, I find it hard to articulate, yeah. but uh, it's scary and exciting, um, and I guess I'm just glad I have the opportunity to still do it, you know. Yeah. Do you carry your camera everywhere? Yeah, I brought it here, but uh, uh, it's, it's up there right now. <laughs> it, yeah, I was filming before. I mean, it's, yeah, it's funny that, yeah, some of you probably thought I was a, the staff camera person or something. <laughs> We'd be so lucky. Yeah, I mean, that would be funny. It's, it's, yeah, it's funny, like, sometimes I'll go through a whole interview with somebody, like, I'll, be, I'll spend an hour and a half with them, and they'll be like, oh, so, okay, so, you know, so what is, what is this? And I'm like, oh, like, they're like, well, who's the host of this show? And I'll be like, oh, I'm the host. I was, I am the host. That's why I was talking to you from behind the camera. And they're like, you can't afford a cameraman? <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, no, no. It's like, I actually prefer to do this. You know, I've always, I've always liked shooting stuff. And uh, yeah, it's just, so I feel like half the time I'm talking to someone, they think that, they don't think that I'm the host necessarily. I think they just think that I'm a camera person that's about to lose their job. <laughs> like, because they're not usually supposed to talk that much. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I love that you still use the little microphone. Yeah, that's a holdover from the early days. Yeah. It's great. I mean, I don't know. You just think about all like the documentaries in like this, you know, the 60s and 70s, like they were just so happy to have a machine that could pair image with sound, right. you know, like, and then they did this extraordinary stuff with that, you know, like the Maisels and all them. And it's like, I don't know why it had to change that much. Is there anyone you've looked up to or watched or? Yeah, I don't know, admire? a bunch of documentarian types. Frederick Weissman, Errol Morris, and Agnes Varda. There's a lot of like, just kind of like avant-garde documentarians that I like too, but um, I don't know. Ken Burns, I, <laughs> I mean, yes. the whole spectrum I, I feel like is inspiring. And what drives you? What's the part that you love the most? Is it just that creative process? Is it the storytelling? Is it the people? It's just that rush you get when you see the thing and you feel like you're the only person witnessing it and then, and then it's gone, you know? Like that, that is like a, a high I can't really get any other way. Um, and I feel like that's the dragon I'm chasing a lot of the time. That's awesome. Well, we wanted to share a few quotes from your fans, not to embarrass you, but oh. yeah, I'm just gonna read them. Okay. How to with John Wilson was one of the best shows I've watched in my life. I wish I could live in a world directed by him. Thank you, John, for making something so beautiful. How? Who is that? Guys. <laughs> Jill Cole. Um, How To is one of my most original shows I've ever seen. Hilarious at some points, very touching at the end, and really bizarre most of the time. Um, I might be in love with John Wilson and his marvelous creative mind. The show is just <laughs> phenomenal. God, I love him and his show. So much footage with smart narrations that never feel dull. Everyone should watch his show. Oh, wow. Yeah. People love you. That's nice. You have like a little cult falling. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't <laughs> expect that. Yeah, I really thought it could go either way. <laughs> <laughs> you were saying you're getting used to your, <laughs> your fame now. Do people come up to you now? Yeah, I mean, people like literally shout at me from rooftops in really? New York. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. I, I didn't expect that at all. Do you shout back? Yeah, and you know, like, and, but and, and usually, like, yeah, someone will say hello, and I'll be like, you know, and then I'll be like, oh yeah, so you know, what are you doing? And then they're, and and that's when like they become a shade lighter, and they're like, oh, um, I'm just going to a friend's, you know, place. <laughs> like they realize that they they probably don't want to be followed with a camera for the <laughs> hour, uh, but I don't know, it's 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 been cool. Like most of the time, like. 
like during the second season, we, it actually got us more access like than I thought it would to different places. Like we were trying to get we were trying to get access to the, the Department of Sanitation, and at first they were like, oh, I don't know, we usually don't do media stuff. But then someone who had seen the show that was a little younger that worked there was just like, No, you have to, you know. And that like that made me feel oh sorry that made me feel incredible like that that it. You know, these, these people that are familiar with the show that, like, are, like, the trust, the tone of it, you know? Right. Because I th th there have been so many kind of Borats and, and, like, other kind of, like, when people think of, like, comedic documentary, they think of often prank stuff. But I, I, I think the comedy within this show comes from, like, a, a, a deeper, more, I, I try to have it come from a deeper, more, like, relatable, like, kind of human place where, like, the humor is that you see yourself in these people and that like they like and that we, we, we share these these kind of like these contradictions and like the, the, these obsessions. It's not just like uh, a, you know a, a, a fishbowl you're looking at like you're in there too. Yeah, I love that the Department of Sanitation doesn't do media. <laughs> not as much, but they gave me full like access. They were so cool. I got to go see all the trash. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, what are you thinking about for your next season? I know you're in like, you can't give away all your secrets, um, but are you, is there anything you could kind of share that you're thinking about? Um, well, I find this kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this could be fun. <laughs> As yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you may have like, yeah, you may have summoned a, a, an evil spirit. <laughs> No, 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 no. I, I mean, I, I, no, I genuinely do. Um, I, I've, I've been thinking a lot about, like, you know, I have a lot of anxiety when I travel, and um, I, I think about very much the design of these spaces, and, and I'm actually, like, I, I kind of wish I was spending a bit more time here, but maybe yes. you'll see me in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yay! <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> I know someone. If you need access, just let me know. Okay, um, can help you out. I'll, 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 I would be on my best behavior. I, no. I promise. <laughs> no one is on their best behavior. I, I'm just. I, I'm like. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, maybe that. Yeah, that's an impossible standard. No, I mean, you know, just like the objects. Like, I, yeah. I, I, I love studying these, these, these objects. You know, yeah. that, 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 that we all use, as you, you all do. You know, like that we, that we use every day, but maybe don't think about. Love it. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do a lightning round, and then we can maybe take a few questions from the audience. Uh, lightning round, sure. Yeah, ready? Okay. okay. So, what keeps you up at night? Um, this noise. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it, it's it's I don't know what it's coming from. I don't know where it comes from. But like, other people in the neighborhood have been trying to figure out what it is too. Oh, <laughs> So it's not just in your head. It's no, no, no. Actual no, no, no. noise. <laughs> yeah, just oh my god! <laughs> Love you. <laughs> okay. Um, where in New York have you never been and need to visit? Um, the Hole. It's like it's a neighborhood called the Hole, and Where's it's that? it's like it's where they keep a lot of the horses, and it's like on the way to JFK. I see it all the time, but it's the only neighborhood in New York that's below sea level, so it's constantly flooded. Oh. Um, Really strange place, but a lot of people live there, and there's, they keep a lot of horses there. Has anyone from New York been to the hole? Has anyone been in the hole? Anyone from the hole? You've been in the hole? <laughs> okay, All just right. checking. Um, next to New York, what's your favorite place or city? New Orleans. Oh, you love New Orleans. Okay. Yeah, it's the only other place I go. Okay. Perfect day. Um, ooh, perfect day. Um, probably <clears throat> just, um, I don't know, like going to the office to see all my friends to make the show. Oh, where is your office? Is it in? It was in Dumbo, but I don't know if I want to do it there anymore. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, like I just, you can come to Williamsburg. Uh, yeah, I, I've honestly, yeah, that would be an improvement. Yeah. I was thinking, 
somewhere in lower Manhattan, somewhere like Lower East Side-ish maybe. It's just like a pain in the ass to get like on the F. Yeah, anyway. that's why I said it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's hard to get to W. Yeah. Okay, bike or walk? Uh, bike. Okay. Best advice anyone ever gave you? Oh, wow. Um, I don't know. Like, maybe it's not fake it till you make it. That's not, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad one, though. Um, so, yeah, something like that. Okay. <laughs> Um, quirkiest habit you can talk about? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I just spend like a disgusting amount of time on f free Craigslist. Uh, <laughs> like, just looking at like what people are throwing out. Um, I'm on there like once an hour. <laughs> okay. Do you ever go find the stuff, or are you just curious? I do, yeah, a lot of the time I do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of cool imagery on there, and a lot of the time people are getting rid of stuff because of like, like break up some stuff and they overshare. <laughs> <laughs> so there's like a lot of good, uh, I don't know, also if you just like go on Craigslist and you just like, if you just type in the word ugly, all this funny stuff comes up. <laughs> Try that. Um, that could be a whole episode. Okay. Um, let's see. Some of these I'm going to skip over. Sorry, Rachel. Um, did you, what, what were you like as a kid? Um, I was a little weirdo. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would make movies all the time. And um, yeah, that's like all I did. I just made a show called The Johnny Show. And I don't think anything's really changed. <laughs> exactly the same. Yeah. Is there one thing you want to do that you haven't done yet? I guess I want to go see Jeopardy in person. Oh. That's a good one. Uh, is that what you meant? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know what your answer would be, but that's awesome. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to see how The Bachelor is filmed. I feel like that is something. I, I want to be able to fly on the wall there. I have ideas, but. <laughs> you could be the next Bachelor. I, eh, I, think, I feel like I'm, I'm not like swole enough. <laughs> I love you. Right? This is the best morning. Know. Okay. Anyone have any questions? We have a bit of, oh, oh okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Hello. Do you ever feel like um, you lose a little bit of authenticity because you now have a team that is, you know, I know you were talking about thinking like you, but just authenticity in general. Totally. Will you I, repeat the question? Oh, yeah. He, he, was, he was wondering if I ever, if, if I ever worry that I'm losing authenticity by, by kind of like outsourcing some of the stuff that I would normally do myself. Uh, yeah, totally. It's, it's, it's something I think about all the time. It's like, it is weird. It's like once you think about like the kind of aura of like whatever the thing is, like you, you, you like, you like to think that it's all coming from the same artist, you know, when you're watching, or when I'm watching something, I, I, that, that's like, it excites me when I know that someone is like, oh, that's like, like Spielberg has the camera in his hand for that or whatever, like I know that he's filming that. But <clears throat> I don't know, I, I, I started to think about it just more abstractly, I guess, and, and, and like think of the show more as a magic trick and it, it's, it's kind of like, um, it's just like a different animal now, and it, there's no way that it could exist without this kind of like team of people. So I just think about it as like a totally different thing. But like, authenticity, yeah. I mean like, what is, I think it's authentically the product of this team, I guess, and I think that's the best I could ask for. But yeah, that's something I'm, I, I might be covering. Yeah. Soon. Mm. <laughs> Cindy. Do you feel after a few years of doing the show that you have more or less faith 
faith in humanity at this point? <laughs> oh, more or less faith in humanity? Oh, I think more. More, yeah, I mean, I don't know. At least the people I'm talking to, <laughs> like, I'm glad that I don't need to, I don't need to, like, like, there's no politics, really, like, no, like, direct politics in the work, and I'm just, like, I, I just try to wash, like, wa wash it of that, because, like, it's just, you see that everywhere else, and I just don't want, I want this to be kind of like a, like a, like an oasis, like, kind of away from that, um, but I just have more just in that, like, people are willing to and, and want to, like, like open up and, like, and, and reveal all kind of shades of themselves. And, I, again, it's a thing where, like, like, I, yeah, I may see, like, a signed, like, you know, portrait of a politician in someone's house, and I just don't shoot that, and I just try to, like, like, I just try to just, like, figure out what is, at, like, what really drives the person, like, aside from, like, um, like the stuff that, all the other stuff that we talk about every day. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 like, I don't know, yeah, so yeah, the answer's yes. <laughs> well, uh, any other questions? Oh, yeah. Uh, have you ever interviewed or met someone that you become friends with or stay in contact with along the way? Uh, yeah, she, she was asking if, if I ever met anybody that, uh, or interviewed anybody that I stayed friends with or came in contact with or kept in contact with. Um, yeah, I mean, the, like, I was, like, the, in the, the Covering Furniture episode, I, I, I meet this um, anti-circumcision uh, activist, and uh, I, like, go to his house, and he, he does this, this very ex, uh, explicit demo for me. Um, <laughs> But, which is why you should not watch it with your in Yeah, which is why, just yeah, wait until after lunch. But, <laughs> um, I, uh, but yeah, he, like, it's, 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 it's so funny. He, like, you know, he texts me all the time. Like, he, he texted me recently of, uh, like, he sent me a picture of someone watching the show on JetBlue, you know, just being <laughs> like, hey, like, you got a fan on, you know, my flight to, you know, my, like Fort Lauderdale or whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's like, that, I, I really love just like keeping up with the people. I mean, so many just live in the neighborhood. Like I, I just, there's this guy that taught me how to cook risotto. I see him all the time. He's always just like, or I see him at the gym or something. It's, so it's like, I mean, I, 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 I do have a lot of, I, I feel like I had a lot of social anxiety for a long time and I just, I, I like that like, I can use this sometimes to, to kind of to help ease like relationships and like kind of and, and, and maybe give purpose to forming them sometimes um, because I have a hard time knowing how to do that otherwise. How do you find pick the people or do they kind of pick you? Sometimes it's just like I just roll up to them on the street and it's like genuinely as you see it, but other times we have to be a bit more pointed. And like, you know, in the wine episode, I was trying to think abstractly about like what it means to eat and drink old stuff. And then we found this guy who eats old like military rations, um, like from like Vietnam. Why? Why does he do that? Did he tell you? I don't, I, I mean, I don't know why he does it. <laughs> I think he tried to get into the military. He's like young. He's like, I think a little younger than I am, but like, I think he tried to get into the military, it didn't work out, and then he just started eating the oldest military food you could find. Okay. Um, and, um, but we found him on YouTube, because he had like, because there, because he didn't have that many followers, he didn't have that many like <laughs> followers. And I, I feel like he, he wouldn't have had like the ego of, of someone with like a, a big, you know, because there are there are like there are like rock star like like old food eaters that are like on YouTube, uh, but I wanted to find someone that was a bit closer to Earth. <laughs> did, you, <laughs> did you just Google people that eat old food? Is that how this happens? 
I still want to be part of this process you, you guys, one day, please. I, I, am, I, am I the only one? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else ever Google people eat old food? Uh, yep. Well, hold on, I see a question back there. Oh, yeah, Julie got it. Wait, hold on a second. What's the strangest thing you've seen? Oh. I mean, in the episode I made about parking, uh, find, like how to find a parking spot, <laughs> there was this guy just like, like, who had his girlfriend's foot like fully in his mouth for a long time. <laughs> in a parking spot? Yeah, because he was like waiting for the street sweeper to come. Oh. That is a thing. People like sit in their cars and wait for the street cleaners yeah. and then they pull behind them. It's yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a whole ballet. But, yeah. but yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff that like, I mean, every single image is, is some outrageous thing that like, I know I breeze past every image, but each image has like a, actually a long story behind it. And that's like, you know, when people ask, or you know, when people, if people want to know, I do like to talk about it. But I also just like just dipping in and out like as quickly as you can. Like, like you know, the shot with all the animals, like all those like donkeys at petting zoo in front of a, like, I don't know if you remember, like um, in front of an apartment building, you know, that was just like this little girl at the beginning of COVID. Her parents just had a full petting zoo with ducks and bunnies and go like, everything just for her. There was nobody else around. I was like, I, I don't know, it was just so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> How long does it take you to shoot one episode? It's hard to quantify. Okay. I mean, it, it takes like about a year to do six 30-minute episodes, so um, yeah. it's, it's tough. They're all just folded into one another. Yeah, very cool. Any other, oh, lots of questions. Okay, go ahead. Has there been anything or anyone that has had a profound, lasting impact on you from having witnessed it or talked to somebody? Hmm. <clears throat> profound and lasting impact. I'm trying to think. I have a really hard time with like specific stuff. Just there's like so much. You mean like within the show? Yeah, I mean, I feel like, I don't know, within like the, the memory, I made an episode about memory, you know, and there were these people that were like, they had this, Man, this Mandela Effect conference for like, it's like for people that misremember the way that things like happened, you know, in a way. And I don't know, like the, one of the guys there made me feel not so bad about having a bad memory. Um, he just said something about, I forget what he said, it was in the show. <laughs> that lasting impact. Yeah, it was just so memorable, I just like, <laughs> yeah, if you can't, I mean, I, I just, yeah, I mean, I, made a, I, I tried to make an episode about having a bad memory to excuse any, any stuff like this where I can't remember anything. <laughs> All right, one last question, because it's 10 a.m. I'd like a microphone. Hi, I'm from New York, and I have a question for you. What uh, neighborhood do you live in, and why? Um, great question. Uh, I live in Ridgewood, Queens, um, and I like it. Everything is the right height there. <laughs> Everything is no higher than three stories, pretty much. All my friends are there. Um, most of it's historically preserved, at least the kind of grid that I'm in, so I don't have to worry about anything changing too much. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, at first, price kept me there, but now it's like, it's just my favorite little part of New York. And um, yeah, I don't wanna go anywhere. Plus, uh, yeah, I just like bought a place there, so it's like, I, I think I'm kind of stuck. Yeah, it's now home. Yeah, awesome. Well, I can't thank you enough. This has been yeah, yeah. Th such thanks everyone a for, fun for morning. Listening. Thank you for being here.